So structure. Every story has structure. Structure really means um, different parts to a story. Most films have the famous three act structure. That means that the story from zero minutes to 90 minutes or 120 minutes is broken into three acts. Act one, act two and act three. Now your film is short, which means that act one, two and three will be short as well. But what you need is structure. Really, act one is the same as saying a beginning. Where are we? Who's the person we're filming and what do they want? That's the sort of three questions answered. The second act is to do with the adventure, the journey. Your character's trying to achieve something or going somewhere and there'll be conflict. And then the third act is really a resolution to everything that's happened up until that point. So in our film, they kill the baddie and win the day. And what happens after? Do they go back home? Do they start again? Okay. So... If we think about Goldilocks and the Three Bears story, look, I know it's a children's story, but it's good at showing structure. So, Act 1, Goldilocks decides she's just going to walk out from her parents' house and go for a nice stroll. And then Act 2 is where all the action happens. So, Act 2, she becomes hungry, lost, and finds the house in the woods. Now... Remembering she's an active character, she decides actually she's going to go in that house and get some food. So she goes in the house, there's nobody there. She thinks, great, there's some porridge there, I'll have that. Um, I'm a bit tired, I'll go to bed. Then, some of the real action starts and the bears come home and, oh my God, you know, all hell bro breaks loose. So that's still act two. And then everything changes in Act 3 when she runs back home and she finds her way home. That's Act 3. So Act 1 is finding out who Goldilocks is and what she wants. And then Act 2 is the adventure. Finding the house, doing all the activities, eating the porridge and also the conflict uh, with the bears. And then when she escapes, it becomes act, act three. It's the resolution. She gets home. She makes her home safe. Thank God. That's the resolution. And it needs to be the same in your film. You need to start with a setup. Who are, your, who are your people? What do they want? Act two is them trying to achieve something, trying to do something or going somewhere. And act three They've achieved it, and the issue is resolved, but what next? What happens to your character afterwards? So I want you to start thinking about your film in terms of parts. Act 1, very quick. Act 2, slightly longer than Act 1. And Act 3, fairly quick again. So we're talking about a 15-minute film, for example, really that works out at 15 pages of script. So, I mean, you could have five minutes, act one, five minutes, act two, five minutes, act three. So that's five pages for each. Or you can make act one shorter, three pages. Act two, where all the action happens, needs to be longer. So we'd say maybe, maybe seven pages. And then five pages for the resolution, act three. So that's the three parts. So I want you to start thinking about your story um, in parts. What happens to your character? You, you, you know your character now, they've got a lot of background, so how do we introduce them? What do we want? What do they want to achieve? You should understand that by now. Who are your antagonists? Who, who are they clashing up against? You know, it doesn't have to be a person, it could be an entity, it could be a bank they're fighting, or maybe a, a court. You know, it could be anything like that. It could be a person, but it could be a thing. It should be something that is at cross-purposes to your character. 
and, and those cross purposes come together in a clash and conflict. If we go back to our cowboy film example, we have our poor farmer and his wife is killed. He loves his wife. They're soon going to have a baby and then suddenly she's dead and he's furious. He wants revenge. Buys a gun. So at one, we 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 have what's happened to his wife. So you know, they have a normal life, a normal family life, and then the horrible thing happens, which changes this whole world. And that change is the difference between Act 1 and Act 2. So you get to that point where his wife is murdered, and that is the, is the change between Act 1 and Act 2. It's the change where, where, where everything changes. So in your story, things will be normal, and then pow, everything changes. And that is the point where your Act 1 becomes Act 2. The farmer wants to find out who killed his wife, he finds out who it is, and he thinks, right, I'm going to get my revenge. So now we're in Act 2. So the Act 2 is the farmer trying to find a way to kill the baddie. So maybe it's him buying a gun or he's learning how to shoot. Maybe he can't afford the bullets. Maybe he's getting advice from his friends to help him. And that's his journey to go to, to, the, to the bad place to kill the bad guy. And that's Act 2. And that's conflict. It's all conflict, conflict, conflict. Which means your character has these external conflicts and internal conflicts. You know, maybe it's a shootout with the bad man. Or maybe it's a fight. But he's also going to have an internal conflict. So maybe he's thinking, I've, I've got a son at home already. If I die, trying to get my revenge, what happens to my son? So he'll have an internal conflict as well as an external conflict. And that's the thing that triggers our emotions as an audience. It's difficult. Once he starts that journey of revenge, it's difficult to come back to normality again. And he's probably having a huge dilemma about possibly dying. So that's an internal conflict. You know, is revenge wrong or right? Does God think it's wrong or right? That's what our character's going through. So there's external conflict and an internal conflict. That makes much more interesting film. So for your character to know for the audience to know what's going on inside your character while they're trying to achieve something. So you need internal character conflicts as external. I mean, there's a lot to ask for a 15-page script, I know, I understand. But it's important to have those elements. And I want you to think about your character going through those three steps, three parts. So I want you now to write a really rough, basic story. Half a page... And that's what we call the premise. For example, this story is about Tom, a poor farmer living in America, who's happy with his life. He's married, he has a son, and he's soon going to be a father again because his wife is pregnant. They're working hard, and then one day everything changes. A bullet flies through the air, kills his wife and his unborn child. And everything changes to Tom. Now he's furious. He wants revenge on whoever fired that bullet. And it's the bad landowner. Okay? That is your premise. And that's your basic story about what is happening, what happened to Tom. And that's a premise. So I want you to write a premise, half a page, that's it. 